Hello all, we're gonna be doing some soil blocking today. So first I wanted to show you what they look like. I'm sure you've all seen them by now. This is the 20 block, um, three quarter inch block. This is the two inch block. They're much bigger as you can see, also a lot squeakier. Um, this just has the attachments that come in it right now. They make a depression for larger seeds, but I do actually also have the three quarter inch inserts. So a square fits on here. That's the exact same size as these blocks. And when you make this block, you can take one of these and plunk it in. So why soil blocks? Um, I became intrigued with soil blocks when I came across some of Lisa Mason Ziegler's videos and I later purchased her book, Cool Flowers. Um, in particular, I was drawn to the more efficient use of resources. So for one, you don't need nearly as much potting mix to make your soil blocks. You're also vastly reducing the amount of plastic that you're using to start your seeds. Um, even, even when you buy, you know, high quality, um, you know, cell inserts, um, they, I don't get more than two seasons out of them usually. So I really liked the idea of never having to use those again. Um, and also potty mix here is kind of her, it's, it's expensive. It's, um, you know, I live in rural Nova Scotia. We don't have a lot of the resources that maybe some of you have, and maybe some of you don't even have the resources that I have. Like I have Canadian tire in the winter. Um, most of, most of the greenhouses, there are a few, um, like plant supply places that are in the city of Halifax. That's over an hour away from where I live. So it's not easy to, for me to have access to a lot of those things. So what I can get at Canadian Tire is what I use. So that brings me to the second thing. Lisa Mason Ziegler has, and others, other people that are proponents of soil blocks, they have um, like a suggested recipe for, for your block mix. I don't follow that. Um, it's typically, um, it's typically comprised of peat or coconut core along with compost and some nutrients added, typically. That's the gist of what it usually is. Um, I can't buy compost this time of year. My compost is frozen solid, so unless I had the forethought to, um, you know, sift it and dry it out and sterilize it in like September or October, this time of year when I'm starting these things, I'm SOL. So I have found that if you use like a pro mix, you don't want to use a seed starting mix. They're just too light and fluffy and they won't hold together. But if you use something like a potting mix, and I have tried um, miracle Grow and pro mix, I prefer pro mix. Um, you can generally get good soil blocks out of it if you sift it first. So you need to make sure a lot of times that potty mix comes with like little twigs and things like that that aren't a big deal when you're planting a pot outside, but in little teeny tiny blocks, they jam up your squares and they just don't work and they prevent it from holding together. Um, sifting it will also remove any very large pieces of um, perlite that might be in it. So you don't have to use like a super fine like flower sifter or anything like that by any means. 
Um, I just take a colander and it catches a lot of the larger, larger materials. So that is why I chose to look into soil blocking. Now, I also didn't want to, I bought these both last year and I used them for part of the seeding season. I didn't want to jump in and show you last year without having enough experience with them. What I have found is I love this soil blocker. I don't love this one. I don't think it's necessary. A lot of the reasons that I love this little one, this one makes redundant. Um, you know, these, these are quite large blocks, first of all, and you compact so much material in here that I don't think I'm saving any soil by using this versus, versus like a cell, a cell tray. Um, so that's one of the benefits that I don't see in this. The other was space. This takes up just as much room as cell trays also, like, I think if you, if you put this, I could be wrong, don't quote me, but I think you can fit like maybe 50 of these on a cell tr or on a standard 10 by 20 tray. So I, even, even my 72 cell trays, I'm getting more bang for my space using that versus this. So, um, other than I think I'm going to try to start tomatoes in these soil blocks this year. I'm going to start everything in these, um, but some things will be transplanted into um, like standard plastic pots and other things I'm going to try putting into these blocks. And I think tomatoes is going to be one of those things. The majority of things I'm hoping I can transplant directly from these soil blocks, but those will be things that are started later and planted closer, closer to actual planting out time. We're still like, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure what week it is, but we're end of January, beginning of February. So we're still February, March, April, May away from being able to plant outdoors. So we're in that 16 week range, maybe, um, maybe a few less weeks. It's not usually quite the end of May when we can get away with planting outdoors. So anything that I'm starting um, on, the, on these small blocks now, most of it is going to need potted up at some point, except for things that remain teeny tiny for a very long time. So. Let's make some blocks and get some things planted. Okay, I'm trying to do this one-handed, so I've already got my soil in the soil block, but you just push it down on the soil to get your, get your cells filled and give it a good push. The biggest problem that people have with soil blocks, I think, is not having their soil wet enough. So. If I just set this here for a second and show you, if I grab some soil and give it a squeeze, I can actually squeeze water out of it. So it is completely saturated. And if you make sure that your soil is completely saturated, you shouldn't have a whole lot of issues. So now I've got my, got my block here and I've got my little, I'm using just a styrofoam um, just a styrofoam plate, I guess you would say. Um, I'm just going to take, take my block. I can fit two this way, I think. And get it as close to the edge there as I can so I can fit the other one. And I like to push down and then lift up on this other lever. So you're, you're keeping pressure on this handle and that should release your blocks, no problem. I'm just gonna fill, fill this again and get my other soil block here and then we'll move on to seeding. 
Okay, so what I'm going to seed today are a few flowers for the cutting garden this year. All of these things are probably a smidge early, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. So the first is some fancy pants um, Iceland poppies. So these are Calibri Dulce Vita mix. Um, these are the really nice, pretty, long-stemmed, hopefully, ones. I seeded some of these. I'm probably only going to seed 20. Um, I seeded some last fall, and hopefully those are making it through the winter, but time will tell. So I wanted some backups in case all of those die. And then the last thing is Blue Glitter Erangium. So these are kind of like those spiky weird, crazy, sea holly type looking things. Um, and these are a perennial, I believe. So I don't think there's quite 20 left in here. I might split one of these blocks between these and the Craspedia and just see how far we get. Or maybe I do have more soil blocks made, so maybe we'll start a whole new tray. We're just gonna go till we don't feel like going anymore. So I think first let's do the fancy pants poppies so step one label because you will forget and then you won't know what you're growing i have done that so many times i can't even tell you so these are colibri poppy and today is january 31st I used to not write the dates on, on the actual seed trays, and I tried to keep a calendar of what I started and when, and inevitably I would forget to write it in the calendar, and then I would have no idea when I started things. And I do like to kind of keep track of when I planted what, so I know what germ, I can learn easier what germination rates and dates like days to germination are, and, uh, and I know I can recognize when there's an issue. Um, like if, if I've seeded peppers and 20 days have passed and they haven't germinated, I'm probably going to need to reseed those. If it's only been 12 days, then they could have a few more days before, before worry. So these seeds are insanely small. So I have a little dish here that I'm going to dump some into. I think there's probably 20 in there. And put these here. Now I had a toothpick here and I'm going to do Lisa Mason Ziegler method. And she spits on her toothpick. I won't subject you to that, but I am gonna lick it. So I have my little teeny tiny, and I'm trying to show, show what seeds look like. These are smaller than a poppy seed, like a, an edible poppy seed. They are the smallest, tiniest things ever. So I'm gonna pick up my seed, and I'm just gonna set it on the soil surface. And they're so little, it's hard to even see if, if it's there, but I think it is. And I'm just going to keep going. Look at that, almost exactly 20 seeds. I have one left over. I'm just going to stick him in with a buddy somewhere. Okay. So, that's the poppy seeded. Now, poppies like light for germination, so I'm not going to cover them up. Um, and I'm gonna let them go without vermiculite for a while. And if I need to add vermiculite later to keep algae down, um, I can come back later and add it if, if I need to. 
I tried that with my Lysianthus this year too after watching Nicole from Flower Hill Farm not put it on right away on her Lysianthus. Um, but it didn't take long and I did need to add it and I think she did add some as well. So probably I'll have to come back and add it but I'll do that after the seeds have germinated. So next let's do some blue orangium. So got my little dish here. <clears throat> Make sure I got them all. There's one in there. In the corner. Okay. He went flying. He's right here. So this is what Orangium seeds look like. Hopefully you can see those well. You're wanting to dump out on me. Um, I should have maybe gotten, I'm gonna flip my toothpick around so I'm not looking the same side. These might be too big. These might actually be better with a um, tweezers. And I'm not sure if these get covered or not. Do not cover. So these need light as well. So that makes it easy. Oh. So far so good. And I find you really only have to lick the toothpick once because every time you're placing it in the soil, the soil is very damp and it's dampening your toothpick too. If there's 20 in here, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and plant them all. They're perennial, so they should, should come back every year. And this way I don't have to, my seed is still hopefully viable. I think I purchased these last year as well, so they're year old seed. I don't know if any of you do this, but I used to kind of like hang on to my seed and save it and not want to use it. And I have come to realize there's no point in doing that. It's freshest when you first buy it. It has its best chance then, and you may as well use it. So. That's another tray seeded. So I hope you enjoyed learning about why I'm trying to incorporate more soil blocks into my seed starting routine every year. Um, if, if you have experience with soil blocks, um, good or bad, I'd love to hear about it. And if you've given it a try, I'd like to hear about it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.